Welcome to our virtual classroom. Join me for some fun learning. Hello, welcome to Legacy Lineage Online Learning. It's Miss Nicole here for story time. So we are gonna be talking about Earth Day. Last year, if you go back into our library of stories, we did a really big study on Earth Day. We took the time to talk about community and different parts of the, the world and how all of us living it together all affect one another. This year for Earth Day, however, we are going to just do a couple stories and we're gonna talk about the solar system and then specifically about where we live, which is planet Earth. If you notice just above the story, we have a mobile of the solar system. So we made the mobile of the solar system and what we did when we were coloring the different um, planets, we took two books that actually have pictures of the planet. So we used the solar system and another book called The Solar System. These are factual books. And we looked at the pictures of the planets and we used those to help us to color our mobile. And I'm also wearing what to me looks like different planets on my bracelet. This is not a bracelet of globes, um, of planets, but they do kind of look like little colorful globes. So I'm wearing this, it's called my Earth Day bracelet to be with you guys today. All right, so if you go back in our library, you will see stories like Too Much Garbage, J just talked about all of the pollution and people who are called litter bugs. We don't like to call names, but people who just throw their trash on the street and they don't find a correct trash a bin for it or they don't take it to the um, recyclable bin. We call them litter bugs, okay? So do you know anything about recycling? and how it helps the earth. Do you know that when we read I Stink, I Stink is all about the important job of sanitation workers and the garbage trucks that come and haul away all of our trash and garbage. But did you know that when we put out trash where I live at, we not only put out the trash, but we also put out our recycle bins. And what we do when we recycle is we separate things, paper and plastic, so that when they take them off to the dump, it helps with the biodegradable part of recycling. And you can also do uh, recycling by making sure at home you reduce, reuse, and recycle. So recycling, just make sure that you put like paper with paper and plastic with plastic so that when it's taken away to the dump, the way it breaks down and the way it um, becomes degradable, which means the way it breaks down is easier for the sanitation people. So you don't have a lot of things mixed together because we want the soil to kind of break down and be reusable. Um, have you ever heard of composting pile? A compost pile is basically old um, things that will break down and go back to being dirt and earth. So like leaves, um, peel from fruits or vegetables, um, yeah. All that kind of stuff that is leftovers can break down and become a compost pile and people use compost piles in their garden so we're talking about a lot of different things here um, another thing i want to bring up is reduce reuse and recycle those are three important words so we're going to talk again about how do you reduce how do you reduce reduce means that you use less so to reduce you use less i'm thinking about paper and how can you reduce how much paper you use? Let's see. How about if, just like in books, when we see pictures in books, they have a picture on the front page and then there's also a picture on the back page. So when you're at home and you are using paper or you're doing schoolwork and you're using paper, maybe use both sides so you reduce how much paper you use so then you're not using one side and throw it out or one side and that's it if you need to you can use both sides of the paper to reduce how much paper you use reuse how can you reuse something i'm thinking about instead of having single water bottles you know how you get a water bottle you drink all the water and then you throw it out what about having your own special water bottle that every time you wanted to have water, you use that one container 
over and over again. You reuse it so that you are not throwing out water bottles all the time. And you know what? If you have to throw away water bottles, it's not that bad because at least you can put them with the plastics and they can be recycled together. There is also places that are called redemption centers. So you can take all of your cans, um, and that's not everywhere in the world, but where I live in the part of the country I live in, in Connecticut, you can bring your bottles to the redemption center and actually they pay you five cents. If you want to make some extra money, you can save all of your cans and your bottles and they take them because what they're going to do is they're going to break down the cans from the plastic water bottles. And that also helps us as we reduce, reuse and recycle. All right, let's jump into a story. We've talked enough about about that if you want to learn more go back into our library and look for the Earth Day story selection okay so this year we're gonna read two stories and then we have a fun one and that one is gonna kind of be a combination of Earth Day and World Book Day and that kind of goes along I'm gonna give you a preview it kind of goes along with I stink it's another fun story like that so let's start with the solar system. Let's start with the solar system because Earth is just one planet in the solar system. So let's learn about the solar system. I am reading, I am reading. Look at me, look at me. Time to put the toys away and listen to what I say. One, two, three, eyes on me. This is the front of the book. This is the back of the book. This is the spine. This is the spine. This is the front of the book. It tells you the name of the story, Solar System. It also tells you the author and illustrator, Jill McDonald. This is the back of the book. It means that it's the end and this is the spine and it holds the pages of the book together. This is a board book, so it's a little different. But did you know the spine in your back holds your body together? So let's learn about the solar system. Look up at the sky. What do you see? What do you see when you look into this at the sky? What do you see? Do you see the moon at night? and the sun shining outside during the day. At night, are you able to see stars? It says, can you see the moon? And it says, astronauts have left their footprints on the moon because astronauts have actually traveled to the moon. In our solar system mobile, there is not the moon. They are just the planets and the sun at the center. Uh, here we go. I'm getting ahead of myself. In the daytime, we see the sun. It is the center of the solar system. Let's learn about all the planets that travel around it. So if you see on the mobile, the sun falls right down in the center and all the planets are around it. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. It says, ouch, asteroids and comets often hit the planet Mercury. Venus is the brightest planet. Woo, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. So it's the brightest and the hottest planet in the solar system. So let's say these words again. Try Mercury and Venus. Mercury and Venus. And on our mobile, Mercury is this planet here. Oh, I'm sorry, Mercury is right up here. And you can't see Venus because Venus is kind of behind it, but it is behind it. We live on a planet called Earth. From space, it looks like a swirled blue marble. Earth is the third planet from the sun. So let me see if I point back here. 
right behind, I think this one is Mars, you see Earth back here, okay? And I will show you the picture. We live on the planet Earth. And that's the rocket. Remember, it said that astronauts have traveled outer space, and that is actually the astronauts um, traveling to the moon. Can you point to the red planet? That's Mars. Mars has giant volcanoes. And if you see on our mobile, there's Mars, the red planet. So we colored that one all red. Jupiter is the largest planet. Jupiter is the stormiest planet in the solar system. And here you can see our Jupiter. It's bigger than all the other planets that we colored. And here is Mars and Jupiter. So Jupiter is the largest and the stormiest of all the planets in the solar system. Saturn. Saturn has rings that go round and round. The rings are made of ice, dust, and rock. So here's a picture of Saturn. And you see the rings around it? Rings are made of ice, dust, and rock. And in our solar system, let's see. Saturn is back here kind of hiding. Let's see if I can turn it without turning everything for you to see. Saturn, here's our Saturn with rings around it. See it there? All righty. Okay, Saturn. Let's see what's next. Uranus and Neptune are dark and cold. So if you see here, this one is our Neptune. And over in the corner back here is our Uranus, okay? So Neptune and Uranus, it says they're dark and cold. Ice crystals give Uranus its blue color. Uranus rotates on its side. And it says Neptune is very windy. So Neptune is very windy and Uranus rotates on its side. Hmm. And remember I told you we looked at the books to make sure we colored the planets. Blue and here's Uranus. Uranus is coming back around. The mobile is moving as I'm reading to you guys, which is fun. Here is the icy blue color of Uranus. All right, moving right along. Pluto is a tiny dwarf planet very far away from the sun. Pluto is smaller than the Earth's moon. Pluto is smaller than the Earth's moon. And I'm going to tell you something else about Pluto. So when I went to school and I was learning about the solar system and planets, we learned that Pluto was a planet. And then it changed and they said, maybe Pluto's not a planet and maybe that had something to do with the size of it and it's small, like it's smaller than um, the moon is. I don't know. But in our kit that we got, they did not include Pluto. So all the planets that we have here, Pluto is not one of them that's included. So I guess the people who made this also don't consider Pluto a planet. But when I went to school, Pluto was a planet. Stars twinkle in the night. Can you connect the dots with your finger and see the shape that stars make? All right. So I'm going to leave it right here because the light is kind of messing with the pictures. And I will show you this star over here right above the lighthouse. And we'll connect it to the next one. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this would be called the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper. Okay, and then there's another over here. Let's read this page. Can you connect the dots with your finger? Oh, here we go. 
see this the heart so it actually said the same thing for both so this is an observatory so this is where you would go if you want to climb up high and look out of this powerful powerful telescope then you could actually see out into space and maybe make out some planet and actually even see some of these star arrangements and so this one also has stars that connect to make the little dipper so there's a big dipper and a little dipper sometimes we see comets soaring across the sky a comet's tail glows when it travels close to the sun so if you look up they say you can see a comet i don't know if i've actually ever seen a comet outside I do like to go outside and, and look at stars. My family and I travel to a state called New Hampshire. And for some reason, when we are in New Hampshire, which is lots of different mountains. Oh, mountains are everywhere. I love it. But I noticed that I see way more stars in New Hampshire than I do where I live at in this city in Connecticut. I don't know why. I don't know why you see more stars in certain places than other places, but that is something that you can have a loved one or trusted adult Google for you. Why do you see stars more in one area than you do in the other area? And I'm wondering if it has some something to do with like when I think about New Hampshire, there are not the area that we go to. They're mostly mountains. They have buildings, but they don't have any really high skyscrapers in this area. So there's not really much messing with the skyline. It's just sky. So you have the mountains, but then you just have sky. But in Connecticut, we have all kind of tall buildings. And if you live in the city, you might have all kind of tall buildings that are letting off smoke and um, getting into the atmosphere. And maybe that's why we don't see the sky as clear in the city as when you do and you go out into an area that doesn't have that much smoke and buildings going into the skyline. Maybe. Google it and let's see what the answer is. So it says the solar system is an exciting place. Where would you like to go first? Hmm. I think I would like Saturn. I would like to be able to see the rings around Saturn. Um, I would also be able to like, you know, see what the red planet looks like. What about you? This is us right here on Earth. Bring, the, bring it closer so you can see better. All right, and so what they've shown us in this picture is the sun. Our mobile kind of turned around, so you can't really see it that great. Let's see if I bring it around some more, if the, the colors will come back and you can see the front of the planet, because now what you're seeing is kind of the back. There we go. All right, so they're showing you the sun, and then they're showing you how close or far away each planet is so again mercury is the closest then we have venus and earth which is the third planet from the sun see one two three then you have mars which is the red planet jupiter which is the biggest planet saturn has rings and uranus and neptune are cold and darker and then way, way out in the back, you got little old Pluto. Little old Pluto. The end. So since we talked about stars and I kind of wondered about stars, let's see. Do you guys know a star song that we can sing? I'm thinking of one that goes, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Where is it? Up above the world so high. Like what? Like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Thank you for joining me. We'll be back with another Earth Day story and a fun World Day Earth Day 
fun story. Thank you for joining me. See you next time. And remember, you are the you in unique.